Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, three different things that are basically things that we all talk about and we all know about, but some of us don't always do completely or correctly. And I just want to go into some details, and those things are trimming your plane, CGing your plane correctly, and mixing. Um, some of us do those things part way, and some people don't do things at all. And so what this is going to be geared towards is just the, the average Joe weekend flyer that wants to make their plane fly better. Um, a lot of times it's a lot easier to learn how to do different maneuvers if your plane is flying at its best. Um, you might struggle with something over and over and over and wonder why. It might just be your airplane. So we're going to go in, go through this and hopefully that will help you. I know once I started doing these things correctly, um, I've taken some pretty bad airplanes and making them fly, made them fly phenomenal um, <laughs> and as far as drawing lines, doing 3D better and everything else. So, so we're going to cover all those. It's going to be a little bit longer video. Bear with me. It's a lot of information. I'm going to describe not only how to do it, but why you need to do it. What are the effects that's, that that's are, are being uh, visually or, or physically exerted on your plane that are making it do certain things and why you should mix it out or why it's affecting your trimming. So I'm going to go into that detail. So hopefully with that understanding, you'll be able to say, you know, you'll be able to feel it, oh, my plane's doing this and I know why, and this is what I need to do to fix it. So, um, this is not gonna, I'm not gonna go all the way into making your plane competition iMac worthy. Like I said, we're gonna base this whole thing on average Joe Pilot, which makes up the better portion of the hobby, I believe. Um, so we're gonna CG and mix and everything uh, for the average guy that wants to do a little 3D um, maybe even upper level 3D as well as maybe lower beginner iMac. So these things will help all of those people, which is a lot. So, so we're going to dive right in with the two first things, uh, which is going to be CGing and trimming. Now that's the first thing you're going to do with a brand new airplane. And hopefully after we go through this, you'll be able to take out some of your existing planes and, and do some cleanup on those that maybe you didn't do. So with that, um, I've tried to do some videos in the field to show how the plane reacts, but without the ground in reference and things, I just wasn't happy with the way those looked. So I'm going to use some visual aids. Um, bear with me, I'm going to do the best I can here, but um, a stick plane is, I, I, can, I can sort of replicate what I'm talking about with that. I'm also going to use a foamy that I've dialed in a bunch of the mixing that we're talking. Even though it's exaggerated, I can show you what your plane is going to look like once you dial in the mixing. So I think this will give you a good, a good reference to get started. So let's, uh, let's start this whole series with a scenario. Let's say we've just built a brand new airplane and we're going to go out and, and fly it for the first time. Um, now what are we looking for? We're looking for trimming our plane and basic CG checks. We're looking for predictable flight and that sort of thing. So I think first it's important to note that uh, CG, what is CG? We've built this brand new airplane, we're gonna go out and fly it, and we've uh, CG'd it by the number that's in the manual or what, you know, on the wing tube or whatever. What is that number? Um, it's important to know that CG is not a number. It's not a specific value that works for everybody. Normally the number in the catalog or in the, in the manual or whatever is, um, is a starting point. It's basically a safe starting point that's gonna get you in the air and get you flying the, the plane. Um, now is it gonna work for iMac? No. Is it gonna work for all out 3D? Likely not. It, it's just a place to get you started. So where is your CG? Um, I invite you to go to the RC Tech Facebook page where we have under the files section is, uh, is a file called the CG Calculator. The RC Tech Facebook page is essentially a place to store files and videos like this to make them easily to find. So if you go under the files section and open the CG Calculator, you'll see that it has a bunch of information on it, uh, a bunch of stuff that we're gonna cover. Um, but one key thing is I kinda go into some more in depth about what those ranges are probably best for and what to watch for as far as roll coupling and that sort of thing. 
Um, so in there you can kind of read around and see what you think your, what, what CG range best fits your flying style. And then there's another diagram there that shows you how to take some measurements or what those measurements are. Um, there's only a couple of fields that you can fill in so you can't really get into too much trouble, but it will give you a, a very accurate CG as long as you fill in very accurate numbers. One important note when you're taking the measurements to fill out the, the fields on the calculator and you've determined what your, what your percentage and stuff is, is the leading edge sweep. Um, that number is very important. Um, this calculator will work on everything from an edge or a straight leading edge all the way to a straight trailing edge. It's not really intended for jets and that sort of thing. It's mostly for aerobatic planes. But that leading edge sweep is very critical on calculating the proper CG. So just as an example, I, I say on the sheet there, there's a little cheat that says put your wing against a wall and measure leading edge. So just to visualize that, pretend this is a wall and there's this is my leading edge of my wing. Put the tip up, yeah, right against the floor and put that up there and measure. But make sure you remember to take off whatever, if there's some base molding or something on the wall because the five-eighths of an inch or whatever that base molding might be is going to throw you off. So make sure you, you find a place, even in a corner of a room with an assistant, you could probably get this done and be pretty accurate. So that's going to be a key. Make sure you get those numbers as accurate as you can. Um, down to the decimal. I do have a chart on there for decimals, so it'll kind of help you figure out uh, exactly what you might be. So once we've got that in, in mind, we can start and go f go made an airplane with the recommended CG, but now you have a number of where you think you know your flying style is going to be, and you can play with that through the first few flights. So what are we going to do? Let's, let's go out and, and maiden this plane. Now we have a CG where we think we're going to need to be. We have our plane CG'd according to the manual or where we think we want to start. And we go out and do our, do our maiden flight. What's the first thing we do? We're going to trim it for straight and level flight. That's the easy part. I'm going to skip and come back to the rudder trimming and how to do that after we cover a couple more things. Okay, so we've got our plane trim for straight and level. Um, what I want to talk about is there's three different ways to CG your part to, to uh, check the CG of your plane, and um, two of which are more common than the third, but I'm going to talk about all three. So the first one that everybody does is a 45 degree upline. Now here's the key. Almost everybody that I see do this is at full throttle. When you're at full throttle and you've got a high angle of attack to gravity basically that you're flying against, um, it does kind of skew your numbers a little bit. So remember when you're doing your 45, don't be full tilt because you're so overpowered it's going to give you sort of an erroneous thing. You might, you might go up 45, roll inverted and keep going straight, but if you're full throttle, you're just basically powering that plane through all the way through everything. You want to be a little over half throttle or a little over half of the speed of the airplane and go up um, you're going to want to watch for a couple of different three different things um, number one if your plane pulls off hard to the canopy that's showing that you're pretty nose heavy at that point if it goes um, straight up without changing and you've got the right throttle you're basically right on the verge of tail heavy and if it pulls towards the gear, you're going to want to land and make some adjustments right away. You're too tail heavy and it's going to have a lot of adverse effects for you. It's going to over rotate and spins and, it's, and that kind of stuff. It's going to be really hard to draw any lines. Um, it's also going to land with the tail hanging down. Um, tail heavy just isn't a lot of fun unless all you're going to do is hover and harrier. So best, to, best not to be there. Ideally, for average Joe pilot with a broadest range of flying, you're going to want to be 45 upline and just barely falling off at a half, about a half throttle. Um, if you're flying precision, you're going to want to toy a little bit more and that'll take, it'll go, you'll want to go through some flight routines and see if it's acting how you want, but you might want it a little bit north of there, a little bit more nose hippie from there. But like I said, average Joe, just barely falling off. Now the second check, that you can do is the same thing, half throttle or half speed, half, uh, inverted, straight and level. Now what's gonna happen here 
is it, everything is going to pull down a little bit more. But if you're wondering if you're tail heavy, at this point when you're half throttle, straight and level, you should not be going perfect. It, even if you're at a, like a perfect neutral CG, not nose heavy, not tail heavy, it should still fall off a little bit. And that's due to uh, something that I'll touch on in the, in the mixing section. Um, but just note, when you're straight and level, you should never be pulling. Then you're definitely, tail, definitely too tail heavy to really fly and have much fun with the aircraft. If your nose heavy, it's going to pull a little bit harder this way. Now the third way is, uh, I'm not sure the name of it, it's basically just going straight and level, about half throttle, you're going to pull but to a knife edge, but you're not going to correct and fly knife edge with the rudder. You're going to pull with no rudder correction and pull up. Now what's going to happen, I'll do it this way. If you're flying this way and you roll and pull and your nose heavy, it's going to come, it's, your nose is going to want to fall off really hard. If your tail heavy, you're going to come pull and your tail might be down. That one's a lot harder to visually see, especially with medium, smaller size aircraft. So I usually, I usually do two. I usually do the 45 up and I usually double check it with 45 at, uh, straight and level. And uh, once you get one set up and you do this whole process, you'll get a good feel for what you like your planes to be like. And you'll know right away when you've made a new plane, if it's not doing that, you'll know exactly what to do. Okay, so moving on from there, let's say that we've trimmed our plane for level flight, excluding the rudder, which I'll get to, and we've now adjusted our CG and we've flown the plane a little bit and we're getting comfortable with it. Now there's a couple other indicators I want to talk about for CG that will give you an even closer idea of where you're at, particularly if you're heading towards the precision realm of things. Um, so some scenarios for you. I'm going to point my airplane this way so you, it's kind of visually representing. So if you're flying this airplane and you roll to a knife edge, and we have not done any mixing at this point. If you roll to a knife edge and you're holding knife edge and the plane goes towards the canopy, you're likely nose heavy. So we can do that both ways. It'll pull towards the canopy. That's probably too nose heavy for iMac. For, for like an iMac pilot or precision pilot, you're going to be shooting for that range where you're going to roll to knife edge and it's not going to tuck or roll. You may have a little roll that you want to mix out. We'll talk about that. But um, you're going to basically want the plane to go without any pitch coupling is what, what that basically is. So now if you're uh, basically the neutral like we talked about that we're aiming for here, what you're going to probably end up with is a little bit of tuck to the, to the gear on both sides. And it, it'll be different on both sides. Like it's, I, hardly any planes are exactly the same on both left and right. So, uh, but the neutral CG, you're going to end up wanting it just to barely tuck and it may have a little bit of roll. It usually will roll towards the gear as well. So what, I'm, what I refer to that is top wing is pulling towards the gear. So it's going to do something a little bit like this as you, as you pull to that knife edge. And that's holding rudder, flying knife edge. If you pull, if you do this and you pull and it tucks really hard towards the gear or rolls really hard, you're likely a little bit too close to that tail heavy um, side of things. We really don't want it to tuck in a lot or roll a lot. Then you might want to experiment with your CG. It's obviously going to take some flights to determine <clears throat> um, how, how you want the plane to react to your inputs and that sort of thing. Um, and this is totally not including anything like expos or anything like that. So I'm kind of assuming that you know how you like how your planes to feel expo wise. Um, but once you get a feel for how your planes rotate and snaps and tumble and hairier and all that kind of stuff, you'll, you'll quickly see where you, how your plane should act when it's brand new like this. Um, and then uh, we're going to talk in this next section about mixing those things out. So don't worry so much if you've got it set right where you want a 3D but it's still tucking and it's still rolling. We're going to mix those things out.
now we're going to return to the part that I skipped over, trimming the rudder. And um, I've just skipped over that because that sort of leads us into some of the things I'm going to talk about in mixing. Um, now, what's going to probably, what most people do with trimming their rudder that I've seen is they'll either do several straight, straight and level passes back and forth, they'll fly towards themselves, away from themselves, and a lot of people go full throttle straight up and trim it for straight up. You don't want to do that. There's a couple of reasons. Um, going full throttle straight up, we have a lot of P-factor issues happening. And I'm going to cover exactly what P-factor is in the mixing section. So for now, all I'm going to say is to properly trim your rudder, what you're going to want to do is eliminate all other forces from the motor and everything, or just aerodynamics in general. Eliminate everything you can to trim your rudder. And how we do that, we go full throttle up, or just go up, you don't have to go full throttle up. Go up and either do a, do a stall turn or somehow bleed off all your speed so that your plane is going down under its own speed. Um, and you're gonna wanna trim it at that point. So it's going to go whichever way you want to trim it down. Zero throttle. It might take a couple of passes, um, but you want to make sure that you're going off. Now, you're going to go up. What you're going to notice now is that when you go up, it's going to peel off to the left. So um, now what your plane is going to do is going to peel off to the left. You'll have to fly it, fly the rudder up turn around and it should come straight down. And uh, we're going to take care of that peeling off to the left and explain why that's there in the mixing section. One other thing I want to cover just briefly in the trimming, uh, trimming section is differential, aileron differential. What is it and do I need it? So what aileron differential basically is, is um, Say you've set your wings up, and I know a lot of guys that set their planes up and they say, oh, I set it up perfect. It's got exactly the same amount of down in both directions on the ailerons, exactly the same amount up. So what, what's happening though is when the aileron, the aileron that's going down always has more drag than the one going up. So here's what's happening on an aerobatic plane when you've set it up that way. So say we say this aileron's down, we're rolling this way. This aileron is creating more drag, and so it's yawing the plane a little bit this way. And so as you roll, it's kind of exaggerated, but the front of your front of your plane is going to go around. It, it's not going to roll very axially. And or you can do this on a downline with no throttle and just put an aileron in, and you'll be able to see what's actually happening if this is the down aileron. It's dragging your plane this way and your plane is actually going a little bit like this. It's only a little bit, but um, another way to see what aileron differential is like on a high wing airplane. A lot of times, uh, certain, air, certain high wing airplanes, if you're only using aileron and just pulling a little bit, um, once you pull aileron, it may, it, your plane will want to go straight instead of turning because it's going to actually yaw your plane and your plane may go around a corner like this and it's going to require you to do a lot more coordinated rudder turns which you should be doing anyway um, but uh, taking that uh, taking the time to clean up that aileron differential will help you a lot now a lot of radios are are built in with it as an example is uh spectrum dx18 a show where this is located at so as long as you have a plane that you have set up with at least two aileron servos, the the differential is already going to be here. So we're going to click on here and you'll see differential. Um, and click on that and uh, what you'll have to do if you want to do that is click on the inhibit and that'll activate it. And you'll see that we have three positions and we can assign it so immediately asking us to assign a switch. So what I can do is already blinking there so I can assign a switch. Say I want to assign it right here. So it's assigned it to that switch and it's going to have three different options for us. If we click a two position switch like this one 
it's only going to give us two ranges. And so what you'll have to do is play around with those values. They'll either be positive or negative, depending on the servo reversing and all that kind of stuff. And just play with it on the ground. You should end up with slightly less throw on your down aileron. And again, this is something it doesn't need to be assigned to a switch, but you certainly can if you like. The other thing you can do is mechanically build this in by just mechanically setting up your aileron so it doesn't go quite as much down. Usually a couple of degrees will work. So something to experiment with. So that one is kind of borderline on mixing, um, but it's, it's one of the things that will help you clean up. So you'll have perfectly axial rolls, you'll have axial rolls down. Um, a lot of people never notice this. It's really not a giant thing, but if you're trying to clean up your flying and help your plane uh, be the best it can, it can be a thing for you. So definitely take a look at that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about mixing. We've went ahead and we've trimmed our plane for straight and level and a downline at this point. We've figured out where our CG t should be and we've gone ahead and flown the plane. We're comfortable with the plane. We're happy with the CG. It's very important, extremely important, that you have all of that done before you start doing any mixing because any little change you do to your CG is going to affect your mixing. Now, it's not so critical that if you have your battery packs, you know, within a five or six inch box and they're a little bit different, it's not going to make that big of a difference. But if you decide, hey, today I'm going to fly a little bit different and I want to take my packs from the rudder tray and move them all the way up in front of the fuel tank, that's going to make a big difference in your mixing. Or say you put an aftermarket tail wheel on and it's, a, it's two or three ounces heavier you may not feel like you have to adjust your CG for that, you know, where your battery's placed are, but you have technically adjusted your CG, so you're going to have to uh, fine-tune your mixes. So make sure that you keep that in mind. When you change things, your mixes are going to change. So what's our goal here with mixing? A lot of people know that there's a thing called mixing in their radio, and they kind of avoid it like the plague. It's kind of like it's a scary thing, and it's going to it's going to be bad if you do something wrong. There's really nothing that you can screw up doing mixing because everything that's in there you can assign to a switch and do it a little at a time and with or without a switch until you're comfortable with it. Um, I've been mixing planes so long now I actually just when I'm building a plane I know where my CG's I'll build some of the mixing in and then I'll go out and they're already there and I gotta fine-tune them. So um, start slow you can assign them to a switch and then take them off. So it's not that scary. So kind of feeding off of what we did with trimming a CG, the whole goal here is to make the flying, make the plane fly as good as it possibly can and give you the best chances of success and the most fun you know, flying without having to work at it so much. Now there's a lot of guys that are going to say right away, just fly the plane. There's no reason for mixing. And that's great. That might be great for them. Um, for the rest of us, we want to do things and not have to fight the airplane and the proper CG may require a little mixing and we don't want to have to deal with that during flight. That's just, it's totally up to you. There's also going to be some people that are going to say that mixing is right up there with using uh, flight stabilization gyros and that sort of thing. And really it's not even close to that. It's, it's not even the same ballpark. And there's nothing wrong with using a gyro either if that works for you. Um, it's, it's all in what makes the flying better for you. Unless you're competition, then obviously you can't use a gyro and you're going to want to do all this mixing. Essentially, just taking the radio that you've spent all the money on and had all, you've got all these features in your fingers and we're going to show you how to make them work for you. So the types of mixing that we're going to cover, there's only four of them. It, and one of them is mostly not a flight characteristic, but something that will help you keep your plane longer. Uh, but So there's three main things that we're going to talk about that are going to be flight affecting. Um, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but it make, it's, makes your plane fly so much better. The first one we're going to tackle is the knife edge mixing. Um, that's a big one. That's if, if you do any of them, that one is going to be the key. Um, the second one we're going to talk about fixing that upline. After we did our downline trim, we're going to talk about fixing our left yaw. 
And uh, then we're going to talk about another mix that we need to do on a downline that we didn't talk about. And you probably haven't noticed yet. We're going to talk about that. And the fourth is going to be a simple idle up. A lot of people ask how do I do an idle up and they'll go through all kinds of crazy mixes and stuff on their radio to get it to happen. I'm going to show you how easy it is. So first thing we're going to talk about is knife edge mixing because that's the biggest one. <clears throat> so if you remember where we left off here just a few minutes ago, we're rolling to knife edge and it's tucking towards the belly and it's rolling top wing towards gear a little bit on both sides. So in most radios it's going to be built in. So every radio manufacturer is going to be a little bit different, but I do know that on the Spectrum DX9, 18, and 20, it's all basically the same, and most of the rest should be as well. Um, so what you'll have to do is scroll through, and it's usually under mixing, and you'll find a built-in one that's rudder, aileron, elevator, and... If we go into there, we can see that I have not assigned a switch. I prefer it to just be on all the time. And since this is a biplane, it's a good example because it's going to be usually a little bit more pulling towards the one way or the other. Biplanes are just a little bit different to mix. <clears throat> so as you can see, what we have here is a rudder to aileron. I've obviously I've got five and five and a half percent in roll. So it's rolling fairly, it's rolling pretty good. That's usually a lot of roll. Usually roll on a, on a monoplane is closer to two to three. And uh, interestingly enough, rudder to elevator uh, is very little. So I'm actually not, I do know I'm a little bit nose heavy on this plane because it's a short coupled plane. So um, on a lot of monoplanes, you might be closer to that four degrees or four percent or so. And so here again, you've got right uh, or left rudder and right rudder. And you'll have to, uh, it'll either be positive or negative values. You'll have to just watch the plane. And I'm going to show a little illustration here with a foamy here later to show you what you should be looking for. But um, it'll be positive or negative values, and that's all dependent on the reversing of your servos. So that the positive or negative doesn't really mean a lot. You just have to look at it and see which one is moving the, the desired direction of correction. If it happens to not be built in like we've shown here, um, you can set up two separate mixes, rudder to aileron and rudder to elevator, and, th and those two mixes will, will work just fine for you. It's basically the same thing, just most 90% uh, of radios out there are going to have that somewhere in their system. So to do this, it's, it's a lot of numbers to remember and it's a lot of details. So it's, it's really good to have a friend go out there with you if you don't have somebody that can stand by you and help you. And actually, once you gain some experience, you'll, you'll be able to, to do a little bit better by yourself. Um, what I usually do if I'm by myself is I'll go up and I'll first take care of, I'll just tackle one thing. Also, I'm going to take care of the pitch coupling. I'm not going to worry about the aileron. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to pull and I'm going to just say, okay, it's pulling pretty hard on this rudder and it's pulling a little bit on that rudder. And I'll land and I'll adjust, I'll put some values in there and then go up and fly. If I go up and all of a sudden the one is pulling this way, I went too far. I want to back that number down. If the other one is pulling just a little bit yet, I want to add some to that. So I'll fine tune that until I get it to where it's hands off and I may still have a little bit of roll. So then I'm going to land and I'm going to put in some values for the roll depending on. Say this side is just barely, I'll put 1%. If this side is rolling a little bit more, I'll put 3 And I'll go up and test that again. And it just takes a few flights. Um, it doesn't take a long time. It'll be a lot faster once you gain some experience. But your goal is going to be, again, half throttle or half speed, um, straight and level. Or, yeah, straight and level knife edge. And holding that knife edge, it should be not being affected. Now, this is not taking into account wind. This is a good thing to do on a day when there's not really gusty or not really windy. Um, and it's something that you can fine-tune over time, you know, as you, as you get a few flights on, too. You might notice all of a sudden it's doing something. You can add a half a percent or something like that. But once you get that to where it does that, it's gonna, you're going to notice an immediate increase in the, uh, the ease 
of doing things like point rolls, slow rolls, all that kind of stuff is going to immediately be affected. And it's, it's a big thing. It's, it's, uh, it's going to help everything from doing rolling harriers to point rolls and iMac. It's going to have a, have a big effect. So I definitely recommend it. So the next thing, let's talk about upline mixing. So we went ahead and, if you remember from our, from our trimming, we went ahead and trimmed our plane for straight down, zero throttle down. So now we had the uh, upline was pulling off to the left. Now that's, uh, you're seeing the visual effects of P factor or left turn tendencies. So there's four of them, uh, just so that you understand what's going on there. Um, it's basically uh, four things that are encompassed under the term P factor. So, uh, what are they? First is torque. You've got your propeller that's swinging this way, and while it's doing that, it's uh, uh, having a left turn tendency to push the nose off to the left a little bit. Um, the other thing is the propeller sl uh, slipstream. So, the propeller is swinging this way. What that's doing, the air isn't just automatically going straight forward, it's going in a spiral around the fuselage of the plane. So that air is going around and it's slapping this side of the rudder, and as it does that, it pushes you off to the left. That's a big one. The third one is asymmetrical prop loading, which is something interesting to read about. You should do some Googling on that, but it's basically the downward uh, the propeller. Think of it as two different wings assuming you have a two blade prop. The downward wing or propeller blade has a bigger bite of air so it's pulling more. So if that, you know, as your prop is spinning this way, this is the downward spinning one. It's, pull, it's pulling this side of the plane harder and uh, giving you a left turn tendency. This one, that one is very um, visual also when you're doing things like waterfalls. So if you're going up and doing a waterfall like this you know that you have to grab a handful of rudder to keep that to come around straight, otherwise it's going to spin out of that. Also in Harrier flight, both upright and inverted, um, all of these, all of the P-factor things in Harrier are visual as well. So you're going to have to keep some rudder and you're also likely going to have some aileron. I've had people ask me, why do I need to hold aileron while I'm Harriering this particular plane? Um, if you're running a prop, say you're on a 100cc airplane and you're running a 29.9 prop, you've got a lot of torque, um, you've got a lot of slipstream, you've got a lot of asymmetrical prop loading too. So, so you've got everything trying to torque and turn this plane, you're going to need to hold aileron. It's just you're countering for P-factor. It's not a deficiency in design or anything like that. So keep that in mind. The, Fourth one is uh, called gyroscopic precession, which also gets pretty deep. It's a fun one to read about or look at. There's a on both the uh, asymmetrical prop loading and uh, gyroscopic precession. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube if you want to learn about what they do. But so all of those things turn your plane left. So that's why we don't want to trim our plane full throttle straight up for our rudder because now it's all kinds of crazy coming down or any other flight, it's off. So just uh, hopefully that's a key and helps you get your rudder trimmed right because that the rudder is very effective and it makes a, makes a difference. Um, you'll, you'll notice that one immediately as well once done correctly. Okay, so for fixing our upline, what we're gonna do is have to create our own mix. So what we're gonna do is go into mixing and we're going to have to create a mix. So what I've already done here is created one. It's called throttle, throttle to rudder. And you notice that this plane took 3%. I usually dial in 2% right off the start, even before I go out and maiden, just because I know it's going to take usually at least 2%. So what we want to do to set this mix up, though, <clears throat> is have our plane on the ground on, not engine running. And what I'm going to do is advance Time the throttle start. to full. And then I'm going to dial in a value, and uh, it'll on this one it'll either be one side or the other, and it'll be positive or negative. Kind of depends again on how all the servos are reversed and or n normal rotation. So, so I'm going to advance it full, and I'm going to uh, dial in a value until I start to get a 
two to three degrees of right rudder. And you can see here I've left this mix on as well. I don't like this one on a switch. Um, so once we have that, you'll be able to notice that as you decrease the throttle, it'll go away. So as you move the throttle uh, back up, you'll get to about half throttle before you'll really start to see anything going, and then it'll gradually move up. So, um, and I'll illustrate that here in a few minutes on, a, on an actual plane too. So uh, the throttle to rudder is that simple. Okay, so I hinted here a little bit ago here um, that we have a downline mixing too. Well, what the heck is that? We've already, we're already trimmed our down. We've already mixed our up. Why do we need a downline mix? And you don't really need it. This one is kind of small, but I, once I started doing it, I did notice a big difference, particularly if I'm trying to draw some lines. Um, I do a lot of 3D myself, and then I also like to draw lines in between 3D maneuvers to break everything up. And I think it makes you a better pilot to practice 3D, even though you're a, or practice iMac, even though you're a 3D pilot. So the biggest thing I noticed immediately is when I come down and you have the plane like this, that it's coming out like this. And you're having to actually push down to get it to go straight down. And that's not ideal because it's just making you have to work more as a pilot to get that nice straight down line. Uh, um, <clears throat> this also has some effects on 45 degree down. Everything you're going down without a lot of power, it's pulling up. Why is it doing that? Most of the planes that we're talking about here that are going to be doing 3D and precision or various variable levels of precision and that kind of thing are going to have, number one, Design, if they're uh, an ARF plane, um, came to you from the factory, and most of them are built with the incidents. There's three different incidents. You've got stab incidents, wing incidents, and rudder, or of throttle, uh, thrust angle. Most of them are going to be zero, zero, zero. So if you ever hear of a plane set up zero, 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 that is zero positive or negative engine, which is most of your plane, most of your aerobatic planes are going to be zero there. Um, your wing is going to be zero. IMAC guys or precision guys will like to play with that a little bit. Uh, for most of us it's going to be zero and the stabs for most of the part are going to be zero. Now a plane with a fully asymmetrical airfoil does not fly. Um, in order to get that straight and level flight we have to have angle of attack. So without having incidents, a positive incidence to give us, give our wing angle of attack, we're getting that angle of attack from elevator trim. So it's not gonna be enough to see. It's usually gonna be that click or so that you do during your maiden flight that gives you straight and level flight. You've just added enough to give you angle of attack at a half throttle speed to first straight and level. So whether you know it or not, you've added angle of attack. So what happens when we do a downline? We've still got that elevator trim giving us positive angle of attack, although now we're heading straight towards gravity. We're not trying to lift away from gravity, and so our plane is going to pull like this. So what's our mix going to be to clean that out? It's going to be low throttle to down elevator because we've already got our up trimmed in. We don't want that to go away because we need that everywhere else. So as we, as we lower our throttle, we want that to go away. It's only 1.5 to 2%. It's not a lot, but it's a lot when you're flying. And that's just one more thing that you don't have to work at while you're flying. So we'll take that out. So now we go back to our mixing menu, and we have already created a mix that is throttle to elevator. And you'll notice in there I have assigned this to a switch. I still kind of assign, uh, I still kind of like to have this one on a switch, and I assign it to my angle down switch. So um, it really is only two percent. It's not enough to fly. It's just one that I put on a switch. So here again, so I have my plane on the ground, engine off, but plane is on, and I've went ahead and assigned a value um, of two percent so that the elevator goes down. 2% when I'm at low throttle. Now you'll notice that with only 2% that that goes away very quickly, like in the very bottom, very small amount of throttle. So it's not affecting us anywhere in here except for on that downline. And that's why it's, it's small, but it makes a big difference. So you can probably see in here, I might idle 
And if we see my elevator, it's actually going to increase a little bit. So, so that's a good one. So this mix is just like the other ones. Um, you can leave it on all the time. It really doesn't affect you. 1.5 to 2 percent isn't enough as your lowering throttle and a landing approach isn't enough that it's going to push your plane into the ground or anything. You'd, a lot of people leave it on all the time and uh, a lot of people will switch it off. And now a good thing to switch it off with is something I'm going to talk about next which is an idle up switch. Um, so as you're coming in for a landing you're going to idle down uh, to a landing idle and that's going to switch that mix off if that makes you feel comfortable. Um, I would suggest doing it with that or if you use a flight mode for landing I would suggest mixing it with there. Something that you don't have to go and remember to do just build it in because you can set up multiple mixes that's signed to one switch. So, Same with uh, knife edge mixing. There's really no reason to to have that on a switch at all because that's going to help you with all uh, regimens of flight that you're going to do. It's going to help you with IMAX just as much as it's going to help you doing a rolling harrier. It's always going to be helping you. And that one has literally no adverse effects on landing, takeoff, etc. So there's knife edge, there's no reason to do that. So the last thing we're going to talk about is an idle up switch, which a lot of people choose not to use. Um, I, but if you've been flying, or especially if you've been flying 3D for long, you've definitely probably seen at least one plane crash due to uh, engine dying on something like a pop top. Pop top is probably the biggest one because two things are happening. Your engine's hot, so when your engine's hot, it's going to idle as low as it's ever going to idle. And you're coming into that maneuver with a lot of throttle, and your engine's hot, you're going in and you're exerting G-forces on the engine, which also has some effects on throttle. So as, you're, as you go in, um, you do your upline, you do your pop top, you chop the throttle during the pop top to keep it spinning, and in, in effect, now your idle is going to go down low enough. A lot of times you can almost count the revolutions of the prop. If it doesn't die, it'll go way down. So things like that, um, are, an idle up is really key to keeping your engine running. Um, there's several other maneuvers, crankshafts, knife edge spins, things like that. A lot of different things that'll, have, that'll cause your engine to sag or, or die. By doing a simple idle up switch, it's going to save your plane. So we'll go in and I'll show you the mix. So just like our last two mixes, we're going to go into mixing and uh, we're going to assign a mix that's throttle to throttle. And I have it here and I assign that switch to, you, know, you have to come up with your own routine on your landing routine. And um, so I've assigned that um, as I already showed with the throttle to elevator, it's assigned here. So I fly, I fly like this. So I have idle down, engine kill. Um, you have to come up with whatever works for you. Just assign it somewhere that's easy to get at, that you're not going to forget about to idle down on your landing. So we've set up our throttle to throttle mix. Again, it's going to be positive or negative depending on your servo uh, reversing. I assigned my switch, assigned which way I want it on or off, and essentially what we want to do is have our low idle, our normal idle. Uh, once the engine's warm, I like to describe it as the engine or the plane will just sit on the grass. It'll sit and not roll. And an idle up should be just enough to get it to start to roll on the grass. So um, it's not necessarily a key number of RPM, it's just enough. That's that. What I described there is actually a very good amount to start with, and uh, that will definitely be enough to keep your engine from dying in flight. So hopefully that shows you how easy that mix is and how big of a difference that'll make. The biggest thing that you got to do then is remember to to turn it off on landing approach. Really, what I'll do is um, say I'm flying and I'm gonna I'm flying over the runway and I think my next pass I'm gonna land. So I call landing. I go out and I usually I'll flip my idle down switch on the back on the back stretch, so that way it gives the the, the engine a chance to cool down. It's going to cool down as you're coming in because you're not coming in full throttle, 
and it'll start to idle a little bit more stable and as you come in for landing it's already going to be down. A lot of times if you are already set up for landing and you hit dial down it might stay up a little bit because the engine's doing its thing and it hasn't had a chance to cool down and, and restabilize. So just a good habit to do. Do your landing, idle down, finish that round and land. You'll notice a big difference on that as well. And once you get used to it, it's just a routine. There's so just to give you a quick visual in case you've never mixed a plane or seen one, just to give you an idea of what the surfaces are or should be doing, um, I'm just using this uh, because it's easier to get on camera in a shot without shaking around. So um, let's just say that I went up and knife edge mixed this. I'm, I've got uh, the elevator and rudder on a switch just so I can show you those separately. I don't normally put those on a switch as we discussed. So. Here's what knife edge mixing should look like, even though this is exaggerated so it shows up on the camera. So as you add rudder, and also these servos are small and a little jerky, but obviously your plane will be smooth. So the mix that you dial in is variable to throttle automatically, So, or add variable to rudder. So as I add rudder, the surfaces will gradually move. They aren't going to jerk or anything else, and that's part of partly what makes knife edge mixing useful all around. Is you're not going to notice it on when you don't really want to notice it, but it's always working for you. So obviously, if you're pulling quickly, it's going to do them quickly. But otherwise, as you go slowly. So okay, so we've knife edge mixed this as we give our give our rudder. It's pulling up. To counteract the tuck to the belly and say so if I'm knife edge that way this is my top wing and it's going to be rolling towards the gear slightly so we obviously want down aileron on that side <clears throat> easiest way to remember it so now we've also done the same thing on this way pulling up and top wing pushing down until we have that straight and level uh, knife edge without any pitch or roll coupling so now I'm gonna flip a couple of switches here and this this is my uh, let's do throttle to rudder first so obviously our throttle to rudder we mix that for our full throttle up line so idle we're at low idle now um, say we're flying along and we pull an up line and we add throttle it's going to gradually go until whatever value we've put in there to for a full throttle straight up line if we're doing since it's variable since we're doing a three-quarter throttle, it's only going to be part of that. If we're doing full throttle, it's going to be all of it. And again, uh, the rudder and elevator are only going to be, we're only talking about one, one and a half or two percent. It's not a lot, but <clears throat> the differences are felt. Um, so now we've got our, say we are just went up on our top um, and we did a hammerhead. We're going to come straight down and we chop our throttle and there's our down elevator. And then once we go back to flying, we add some throttle and it goes back away. So that's, there's our down lines going straight down, add throttle, and it goes away. So hopefully that gives you a little visual on the, I'll turn them both on. They're, again, they're exaggerated, but there's low throttle, there's high throttle. So they're both, both those are doing different things for you, but now you understand what's going on there. So hopefully that helps you. So hopefully this has been a, a decent guide to get you some understanding of what's happening and why mixing can be a benefit to you and also um, showed you how to properly your pl uh, trim your plane if you hadn't been doing that and also covering the CG. I hope that it gives you some insight that maybe you want to explore different CGs and different flight ranges on those. Um, I know it's made a huge difference since I've been doing this in my flight, uh, just my flying in general. I hope it will yours as well. Combined these and exported them as a PDF file so that you can have them either on your phone or in print form or whatever when you're out the field doing this. It really isn't, this video is long and there's a lot of information. Once you've done it a few times, it's going to click and it's not going to take you more than one or two flights to get this all dialed in. 
and uh, I think you'll notice a big difference. So definitely give it a give it a try if you haven't ever done it before. Definitely enjoy. Happy flying, and feel free to share this. Um, it's all about making it fun. Um, flying for fun or flying for competition, either one. Um, share this to people that might uh, find it advantageous. Thanks for watching.